Right, welcome back. In the previous video, we created the house class. It's got number of windows, number of doors, type of walls, type of roof. We had the constructor. We had a simple method at the bottom, printing out all of the properties. And then we had ways of setting the values and also getting back the values or the properties. Now, in most programming languages, when we create a class, the properties of a class should normally be private properties which means that you should not be able to directly have access to these properties outside of this class. So now we can create a private variable by adding an underscore in front of it. But that changes the whole variable name. So you can see at the top we will start getting problems there with uh, some of these values. So I'm going to create all of them to be or change all of them to be private variables. So it's private types, and then we've got problems in our constructor. So what I'm going to do here is to say that for this house constructor, I will accept number of windows, number of doors, type of walls, and type of roof. But now referring to this dot number of windows, this does not actually exist anymore, because now we only have private properties at the top. So I need to make these that I'm calling also calling the private ones which means that these properties at the top, which is private now, should be the number of windows that was passed in, the number of doors that was passed in, the type of walls that was passed in, and the type of roof that was passed in. And also where we printed out, this must now be the private versions of it that we are printing out. So this is how I can change my class to have private variables or private properties that cannot be accessed outside of this class. But we do have one problem here. Let's remove these lines now that's giving us problems. And we'll look at them quickly. So let's say at the top one, the house there. Well, let's look at this one. We've got the number of windows as 15, the numbers of do number of doors as 3, the type of walls is brick, and the type of roof is tile. So if I go and say house 2 and I put the dot, you can see that I've got access to number of doors, number of windows, type of roof, type of walls, and print data as I did before. The only change now is that there's an underscore in front of it. So I can go and say a number of doors and let's change that to four. And then we can go to house to dot print the data. And if I run this, you will see it still prints out the data. I've changed the number of doors to four. So let's see the bottom one. The number of doors is four. So now you can say, but how is this in any case different than what we did before without adding the underscore in the front. Well, Dart sees this because in Dartpad we only have one file and Dart see this as private inside of the file. So that is why we still have access to it in the main method. So I want you to quickly go and create a new project in Visual Studio Code and let's create these files in Visual Studio Code. Right, so now I'm in Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna create a new file called main.dart and I'll also create a new file for my class. So let's call this one house.dart. Right, so let's go back to Dartpad and I'm gonna copy this class. So make sure you take it from the opening and the closing brace there into Visual Studio Code, into your house.dart and you paste it there. So it look, should look like this. I can save it then. Now let's go to main.dart. For main.dart, I'm gonna have void main and let's create an, a house object now. So I'm going to say var house equals, and if I start typing house, the autocomplete comes up and you can see it picks up the house class that you declared in the previous file and then it says auto import from house dot dot. So this is what you want to do. You want to select it and you can see now dot gives you these values. So the number of windows, let's say 10 using your tab, number of doors, let's say two, using tab again, type of walls, let's say the type of wall will be plaster, use your tab again, and then we can have the type of roof as tile, and just end it off with a semicolon. And there you can see now we created a new house object. Now let's try one of those functions again. So if I say house dot, can you see that the only method 
I've got access to, or the only thing I've got access to, that we declared in the house class is print data. So all of these properties, number of windows, number of doors, type of walls, and type of roof, is not accessible in this file anymore. I cannot go and say house dot number of doors or house dot number of windows because it's not listed here anymore. It's private. So the only thing I can do using this object is actually print out the data. So if I save main dot dot, go to terminal, open up the terminal, and we run dot main dot dot. Remember, everything starts in your main dot dot file. Number of doors, two. Number of windows, 10. Number, uh, the type of roof, tile. The type of walls, plaster. So now we can see that we can still access those values using a method. So in order for us to access these values, which is private, we need to have publicly accessible methods. And in this case, print data is one of those publicly accessible methods. We can also make this method private by adding an underscore in front of it, which now means that if I go back to main dot dot, even print data will give me a problem because after the dot there, you will see print data does not exist. Now, if we go back to house, I don't think we need to have print data as private. So we'll have the methods public so we can show the user the data inside of the properties. Right, so now how do we change the value? So previously on dotpad, we quickly go back, on dotpad, we saw that we can change the value by, of house to by just going and saying house to dot number of doors. And then I can set it. And if I want to get the value, I can just go and say, let's say, for example, print house dot number of doors. And it will print out the number of doors. So I've got access to it because it's in the same file. But in Visual Studio Code, how do I now get that one single value? And how can I go and set a specific value? Now for that, we need special methods called getters and setters. So I'm gonna save the main file. Let's go back to house.dot. Let's open up this a bit. All right, so let's see how we can create getter and setter methods. So let's start with the getters, and that's to access whatever is saved in one of these properties at the top. So we will start off with the type that we want to return. So if I want to get back the number of windows, I will start off with int. So that's the type I want to return. Then that will follow, after that will follow the get keyword, then a space, and then I'm gonna say number of windows. So that will be the name of the method to return this number of windows. Then I can have my curly brackets and I can return underscore number of windows. So this in short is a getter method on how I can get back the value of number of windows. So if I save this now, you can see it's called number of windows. So if I go back to main, I can go say house dot and you can see there's number of windows. And now it will get me the number of windows. Right, let's complete it before we look at an example here. Right, so another way of doing this, because it's got only one return statement there, and that's normally my getters works that way, I will basically only have one statement. In some very specific cases, you could have more than one line of coding in here. And then you can use your, your brackets. For the rest of them, we can actually just use the fat arrow. like this. So this is a normal getter. Right, let's do another one. Instead of getting the number of windows, we will get the number of doors and return back the number of doors. Right, let's get the next one. Number of windows, number of doors, so now it's type of walls. And we're going to get back type of walls. And remember, you can also use the this keyword in front of it if you want to make sure you're referring to those at the top. But I don't th think there's any confusion here. Right. So the problem here is type of walls is now of type integer and I'm having an integer. Oh, sorry, it's of type string and I'm having an integer at the back there. So obviously we'll need to change that to a string as well. Right. So I'm going to copy that one. 
and paste it again and this one will be type of roof right so now because these are private i do not have direct access to them but because we created these get methods now we can actually get access to them by calling these so let's save this go to main.dot and let's see what we can use here so let's say we're going to print out house dot and now you can see we've got number of doors number of windows type of roof and type of walls so let's print out the number of doors let's run this quickly again let's just save first before we run it okay and it prints out the number of doors as two there so let's do something else let's say print house dot type of walls save it let's run it again two and plaster working perfectly now let's try something else in between these let's try and change the type of walls so i'm going to say house dot type of walls equals something else so it doesn't really matter what i type there now you can see there's an error now and the error if you hover over it says there isn't a setter method named type of walls in class house which means i cannot set it this way unless i go and create a setter for it so let's go back to house now we created the getters and these methods only help us to get the value back so how do we create the setters now the setter methods do not return back a value so i'm not going to add int or string or something at the back of it i will just start with the set keyword now i'm going to use exactly the same name for the method and that's how the setters and getters work i'm going to say number of windows my setters should accept exactly one value that it needs to set to my property so the number of windows is an integer so obviously i will accept an integer maybe called number then i'm going to use the fat arrow what do i want to do with that number that's passed in i want to set the number of windows to something else so i'm going to go to number of windows equals the number that was passed in so it's still one statement that's why i can use the fat arrow so it's the number that was passed in will be my property's value number of windows the one i declared at the top right now let's do it for the rest also so that's the setter for the number of windows so let's say the number of doors we can keep it as number and this one will change to number of doors now let's do the setter for the type of walls and note that i'm declaring this method name exactly the same as the method name there right so we're going to accept a string this time and let's call it type and what we're going to do is to go to the type of walls and set it to this value that was passed in which is type now for the last setter type of roof leave it as type but this one will be type of roof so you can see that we've got a number of windows method that's got a get and a set in front of it two different methods although they have exactly the same name All right so let's just quickly run through this the getter methods must only return back one value and you need to specify the type that it will be returning back if number of windows is an integer then you need to return back an integer type of walls and type of roof is a string so you need to return back a string and it's only one line normally which means we can use the fat arrow and it's then very easy to read and see what's going on the same for your setters it must have the same name for the property that you've got the getter method and it must accept exactly one value and that value must be set to your property and how you set it doesn't really matter you can multiply by 10 there or whatever you want to do point being you can change it to a different value all right let's save this quickly and go back to main dot dot and all of a sudden that error disappeared now because now we're using the set method accepting a specific value which is after the equal sign whatever that value is so let's say we the type of walls will now be brick so i can still set it this way i'm not passing in a value you're passing in the value after the equal sign so it works a bit different than normal functions All right so let's save this and see how it runs so we change now the type of walls to brick and you can see it prints out brick so now we are using in this class we are using private properties or private variables but all of the methods the house constructor 
the getter methods as well as the setter methods and the print data method is all public. We did not declare them with an underscore there. So which means they are all public and we can use them. You cannot make a constructor private, otherwise how on earth are you going to create an object of it? So your constructor is always public, does not have a return type at all, not even the void keyword. For all of the other methods, you have getters and setters, and then you can create your own methods like you would do a normal function. Thank you for watching the video. See you in the next one.